Spring is here, so with the new season comes an opportunity for a fresh start. And I don't know about you, but I always like to start off a new season with a good declutter. As much as I like to stay minimalist-ish and tidy in my space, stuff always somehow finds a way to creep back in if you don't stay on top of it. So if you're planning on doing a little bit of spring cleaning this season, these are my five best decluttering tips to help you get started. And for those of you who don't know me, welcome. My name's Christina. I talk all about intentional living, intentional spending, and how to get the most out of what you've already got. If any of that sounds good to you, then please give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. We're pretty cool here. And if you want to see even more exclusive content like guest interviews, a secret podcast, and bonus behind the scenes content, you can also check out my Patreon. It's all going to be down below. But big disclaimer here, before you go and start throwing out your life into garbage bags, I don't think decluttering should be used as an excuse to create space just so you can fill it back up again. That can be totally wasteful, it kind of defeats the purpose of decluttering, and let's be real, that can get really expensive. For me, I always like to look at decluttering as a tool, as in a maintenance tool. Just use it to edit and audit your space from time to time when you feel like it needs it so that your space and your life remains calm, practical, and inspiring. So with that, let's get into decluttering. Tip number one is probably my best tip and that is to keep what you actually want. Sometimes I think decluttering can get a bad reputation because we often approach it from a negative space. Think about it, whenever you feel an urge to declutter, is it ever because you're feeling inspired? Never for me anyway, it's usually because I'm feeling overwhelmed and my default reaction is to say, all right, f it, let's get rid of everything. I can't handle this anymore. Same for you? Yeah. But this attitude often led me to getting rid of things simply out of frustration rather than thinking about if they actually brought me joy, use, or value. Whenever I decluttered from that perspective, I would declutter things as impulsively as when I bought them in the first place, which doesn't really have a lot of thought behind it and I think can often lead you to regretting what you got rid of. I ended up getting rid of things I didn't really want to get rid of, but I just did because I thought I should. So instead of decluttering from the perspective of what you think you should get rid of, think about decluttering from the perspective of what you actually want to keep. Because think about it too, saying yes is often a lot easier than saying no. And in my experience, I find keeps the whole scenario positive and really just takes the pressure off. If the item brings you joy, use, or value, that's enough. Keep it. Tip number two is to control the inflow. For most of us, I think the buildup of clutter is actually a slow burn. It really isn't something that you bring in overnight to the point where you can't control it anymore and it becomes overwhelming. Instead, it kind of trickles in slowly and you almost don't even notice it as it's happening. Think about it, you get a free sample in your Sephora order, you buy one extra t-shirt to get free shipping, and before you know it, your makeup bag is suddenly feeling like it's overflowing, and you're putting three tank tops on one hanger just to make more room in your closet. So really, clutter rarely comes in all at once. That's why instead of always focusing on getting rid of things and controlling the outflow, I think it's even more important to think of the reverse and control what comes in. Start being picky about what you allow into your space. Because if you're not, that's when you'll find you'll spend most of your time figuring out what needs to go out. One way I like to control the inflow is by saying no to things like free samples. In my case, I say no to a lot of PR packages. Instead of asking for gifts, I'll ask for things like gift cards so that I can buy what I actually need. And the other thing I like to do is, well, you know, I want to tell you, but it's just, it's getting really hot in here. I think it's time to strip down. Oh, no, no. Not like that, like this. You really thought I would do that? I would get demonetized. This is not OnlyFans. The stripping I like to do is with True Earth Laundry Strips who are sponsoring today's video. Just in time for Earth Month, True Earth is inviting you to give a strip and ditch all those unnecessary plastic laundry jugs from your life. I've been using True Earth Laundry Strips for years and they're legit. Each strip is ultra concentrated where one strip is equivalent to one load. So all you have to do is toss it in the wash and you're good to go. It makes doing laundry so much easier, including when you travel. And my favorite part is that it saves so much space while cutting down your waste at the same time. Like this is our entire laundry kit. So no more bulky, ugly plastic laundry jugs just cluttering up your space. Not to mention they're a certified B Corp. They're Canadian, so gotta represent. 
A, and to date they've donated more than 36 million loads of laundry on a mission to combat the 645 billion plastic household containers that could potentially be dumped into landfills and oceans every single year. Yeah. I said billion. So thank you so much to True Earth for sponsoring today's video. Let me know how you're going to be giving a strip this Earth Month. And if you wanted to start simplifying your laundry routine, you can also get 10% off your first order from True Earth using my code right here. And I always have it linked in every single one of my YouTube videos. So if it's not today, it's easy to find when you're ready. Thanks True Earth. I'm putting this back on because we weren't really stripping, were we? Tip number three is to avoid the backups trap. So look, I love having peace of mind knowing that I have a backup tube of mascara for when I run out, but I really don't think, at least I personally need, three, four, five, six extra tubes lying around for just in case. And I find the concept of backups to be an especially touchy subject when it comes to things like makeup and skincare. Yes, you never want to be without your favorites, but when you really think about it, is that even realistic? These things often expire, they have a shelf life, and how fast are you really going through it? So one thing that's really helped me simplify and minimize clutter in my own space is minimizing the idea of having backups, at least too many backups. So I think it's better to just consider keeping a reasonable amount of backups because otherwise when you have too many, to me, it just kind of feels like you're falling into this scarcity mindset of just in case and planning for the worst. And let's just be real, let's be totally honest, when has just in case ever happened with your mascara or moisturizer anyway? Guilty pleasure, I love a good restock when I run out of something. Not only is it super satisfying to get to an empty, but I want to go out and buy my replacement. Maybe at that point is when you wanna try something new. And it's kind of fun when it's time to restock. So when you have too many backups, you can't really do that anyway. And I also think you're gonna go buy that thing you wanna try anyway, while still having your backups going at the same time. So we're just, you can see how this sort of snowballs into too much clutter and too much just in case. So when it comes to backups, I think have a reasonable amount for what you can actually use, what you actually need so you're not left in a pinch. And then the rest of your pantry your makeup drawer, all that doesn't necessarily need to look like a Costco. Just saying. Number four is more of a habit, but that is to keep a wish list. Keeping a wish list is, to me, one of the best ways to control the inflow of things coming into your space. You can almost consider it as decluttering in advance. Because the harsh truth that I at least had to come to terms with is that there's always going to be something to want. And wanting is kind of the easy part. The hard part is resisting buying the thing and saying no. And because that is really hard for a lot of us, I like to calm down that impulsive, I want it, I want it now side of my brain by writing that thing down on a wish list first. If you've never tried this before, you would be shocked at how many things you forgot you even wanted to begin with. And the only way I even know I wanted something in the first place is when I'm going to write something else on my wish list. So it's a really handy tool to just kind of put that energy somewhere instead of having to put your money into it instead. And when it is something that I am considering buying, I like to give myself an absolute minimum of 72 hours but usually I like to wait even a week or a month or more before I'm ready to take the plunge on something. But honestly, sometimes even giving yourself 10 minutes is often even enough time to let yourself forget about it. So if you're wanting to minimize on clutter and control the inflow of things, the wish list is one of my best tools, hands down. And number five is to make it a habit. Like I said, decluttering is best thought of as a maintenance tool rather than a frustration tool. And with maintenance, this implies that you do it regularly, AKA you make it a habit. And how does any habit happen? Well, you start small and you start one day at a time. You can start by setting aside a specific amount of time each week. You can set a five minute timer, even a two minute timer, and just pick a small area of your space. It can be your glove box in your car, a drawer in your office, your sock drawer, something small and manageable so that you can compound the small wins over time. But the more you make it a habit, the less overwhelmed and frustrated you're going to be by your clutter, and you'll start to see that progress reflected in your space over time. And this way, you're also less likely to have to dedicate an entire weekend of your spare time decluttering your house, and you won't have to spend the next year of your life driving around a garbage bag full of clothes in the trunk of your car. So when it comes to decluttering, I really think it is less about being reactive and more about being proactive at the end of the day. 
This way, not only will it keep your space nice and tidy, but you'll be just a lot more picky about what comes in. And I think it's gonna help minimize any decluttering regrets in the long run. Let me know if you're gonna be decluttering this spring and what your best decluttering tips are. Leave me a comment down below. Thank you so much to True Earth for sponsoring today's video. If you wanted to check them out, I will also leave it linked down below. Check out my Patreon if you want more, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.